In 2020, Norwich were on top of the world as they got promoted to the Premier League as champions. But then the following season, they got sent straight back down to the Championship after finishing rock bottom of the Premier League, and that's where they've been ever since. And with injuries plaguing the team mixed with inconsistent performances, they are currently sitting mid-table right now, but boys, that is not going to last like that for long. David Wagner is out. Your boy Goodwin is now in charge of Norwich with the sole purpose of making them the best team in the world. So this is the team I've loaded into in Norwich City and on paper this team should be doing way better than just mid-table. Now granted they've got a lot of players that are gaining on a bit right now they've got a very aging team and that's a disadvantage straight away. And on top of that they've got a stupid contract situation at where if we don't sort it we're going to lose half of our bloody team. And someone did say that Norwich were played with injuries but Josh Sargent and Huang Weiche were the only players I could actually find that are injured right now for Norwich. Now I have tried to put these guys out until after the new year but Josh Sargent's got a broken collarbone and Huang we has got a broken metatarsal and apparently that takes four weeks to recover from so don't blame me blame the game but on the flip side Norwich do have a couple of solid players like Christian Fashion at the Swiss winger I've definitely butchered that name but he's their highest rated player and they've got Gabriel Soro the Brazilian midfield who's only 24 and if I'm not mistaken a lot of Premier League teams are sniffing around this guy so all in all guys whilst this team does have a lot of disadvantages and cons to it there are a couple of bright spots we can definitely utilize but the first thing I'm doing is changing the formation to the 4-3-3 holding variation and it'll make a lot of sense why I'm going to do this in just a second. And the tactical vision is going to be wing play because our wingers are definitely going to be the most deadly part of our front three. And after messing around with the team, this is by a mile the strongest starting 11 we can feel with Norwich City. And I think it's fairly obvious why I've switched the formation to this one because we've got one CDM in the team and a couple of centre midfielders. We've got no central attacking midfielders so this just makes sense. And we've got a stellar budget to work with in season one. 80 million to use man and if we use this right we could take Norwich from mid-table in real life to the Premier League in season two but the question is now where do we actually put this money because there's a lot of areas that we definitely do need to improve but one area I'm leaving alone is our centre midfielders Sara and Nunes they are not even 25 I think these guys could potentially be the future for Norwich City but these two definitely won't be our future Hanley and Duffy now I know Hanley's our captain but they are both 31 years old and for outfield players that basically means the beginning of the end. We could also do with a younger CDM than for sure. I mean, he's 31 years old and our replacement McLean is also 31 years old as well. Now, Barnes definitely isn't going to be our striker going forward, man, but Josh Sargent will be back in four weeks against my will. So once he comes back, he'll just slot straight into the starting 11. And I was wondering where this guy went. Christos Solos is currently on loan to Dusseldorf and I actually wasn't aware of this. He last year when I used him turned into a monster every single time, but for now I'm going to keep him out on loan at Dusseldorf to see what he can do away from the club. But it looks like for now, this 80 million is going towards a CDM and two centre-backs, but whether we're going to be able to afford to do this with this money is a different story. Now, sorted with the CDM, I'm going for Ben Sheaf from Coventry City. He's 6 foot 1, only 25, 74 overall. Granted, he's not the fastest player in the world, but for a CDM, you just don't have to be. And with his market value being just under 5 million, I reckon we may be able to get a bargain with this guy. Now, we have got 18 million, but that doesn't mean necessarily I want to go overboard with it. So I'm going to go for 4.4 million as a starting bid. And they suggested that straight away. Why do I feel like I could have got him for 4 million? And just like that, boys, for 4.4 million, he's now entering our Norwich City complex and he's now a Norwich City player. And there he is in the kit itself. He's the first signing we've made as Norwich City manager. Let's hope it's the first of many good ones. Now that leaves us with 13 million to spend. And honestly, I don't think for the caliber of players we want, we can bring bring in two centre-backs, so I feel like we're going to have to settle with just one. And that one is Sam Bukema from Bologna. He's only 24, already 74 overall. He's worth between 10.1 and 8.1 million, so I definitely feel like once we sign this guy, it'll be our transfer window done. Now, we haven't sorted the contracts out yet, so I'm going to try and get him a little bit cheaper than usual. 8 million is our first transfer offer. And they've accepted that as well. Why do I feel like I'm overpaying every single time? But nevertheless, boys, I think it'll be 8 million pounds well spent. Sam Bukim is now a Norwich City player and I'm pretty sure that's our transfer window done. And we've now got 1 million left in our budget after renewing everybody's contracts. I think it was absolutely the right call to leave the transfer window there. And now the team looks like this going into season one. And I know initially I said I might be able to get these guys promotion. I don't think I want to yet. I mean, don't get me wrong, for the championship, it's a very solid team, but for the Premier League, it would get absolutely annihilated and we get sent straight back down. I think we'll use season one 
one is the foundation layering season. I want a lot of these players to improve in overall so that when season two comes around, we can properly challenge for promotion. So season one is done and dusted and we are in the playoffs alongside Millwall, Watford and Leicester City. But like I've just said, I'm not exactly against the idea of not getting promoted in season one. If we don't do well in the playoffs, I wouldn't exactly be mad at that. But we've absolutely smashed Watford in the playoff semi-final. We're playing Millwall in the final. Boys, there's a good chance we're going to get promoted here. And in fairness, boys, look at that starting 11. Oh my god, the improvement this season has been phenomenal. But we still got one more game to play. Let's see if we can win it. Oh my god, we have got Norwich City promoted back to the Premier League in our first attempt. Fashnet with a brace and that presents us with a whole new challenge for season two. But we got knocked out by Birmingham in round three of the FA Cup. And we only made it to round two of the Carabao Cup. At this point, it's actually comical how bad I am at these competitions. But let's just have a proper look at this starting 11, man. Everybody has put a shift in and literally every single player in this team has improved. I don't know why Ben Sheaf's so unhappy though. We've just been bloody promoted, you miserable sod. Cheer up. In stats wise, Fashnet that was our best player. 26 goals, 12 assists in 51 games. Fair play to him. Sargent got 16 goals even though he was injured. Sorry, got 16 goals and 7 assists from the centre midfielder position. Growing 4 overall as well. We have got an absolute gem on our hands with this guy. But boys, it's official. Even though we finished 5th in the championship, we have been promoted to the Premier League in our very first season in charge of Norwich City. Boys, you know where to find me. But that now means we've got to make sure this team is ready for the Prem. And honestly, right now now, even though there's been so much improvement, we're nowhere near ready yet. And if we left it like this, we'd get sent straight back down to the championship. But very quickly, boys, if you're enjoying the video so far and want to see more content like this on this channel, leave this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. So it's now our second year in charge of Norwich and it's official, boys. We are now in the Prem with Norwich City. Now, anyone with half a brain can see there's been a lot of improvement from a lot of individuals from season one. For example, Gabriel Sara is now 78 rated. Even though he was injured to begin with, Josh Sorge is now 76 rated. And this guy seems became our best left winger in the entire team out of absolutely nowhere, grooming to 75 rated. But even though pretty much everybody in this team has improved massively from the start of season one, it will still get its absolute backside handed to it in the prep. Now, luckily, we've got a tidy budget, 53 million to sort this team out and get it ready for a relegation battle. But if I'm being honest, I don't think that money's enough for what we actually need to do to survive. For for example, our left back, our left centre back and our right back definitely aren't up to Premier League standard. And to be honest right now, neither is Nunes. Now he is 24 years old and he's already 74 overall, so he gets a pass this year. I'm not going to focus on the midfield at all. I think I'm going to focus on the defence. Now Bukema is also getting a pass. He's 76 overall and he's 25 years old and he's by a mile our best defender. But when our best defender is 76 overall in the Premier League, you know for a fact we are in trouble. So it's now down to us to make every Every single penny of our budget count to make sure we stand a half decent chance of surviving the Prem. And starting with the centre back, we are going big. Odalon Kasunu is six foot three, already 79 overall, at only 23 years old, and his stats are incredible. He's got 86 strength, jumping in 85 sprint speed. Man, he's the perfect centre back for the Prem. Now I offered 24 million for him, and they've come back with 31.4 mil and a 10% salon clause. Okay, let's bite back with that. Let's go for 27 and a half million. They want 28 and a half million. Nope, the tension meter's still decent. We're going to go a million below just because you did that. They want 28 and a half million. Okay, let's go back to 27. I really don't want to pay 28 and a half. There we go. Finally, you stubborn sod. We are one step closer to gain our centre-back. I'm going to offer him 70k a week. That's more than double what he's currently on at Torino, man. Hopefully he goes for this. And that is a done deal. Odilon Kasunu is now a Norwich City player. And there he is, rocking the number 4 shared for the Norwich City kit. That's our centre-back sorted. Now we just need two full-backs and I think I know just who to bring in. Now firstly I'm going for Nathan Patterson. He's only 74 rated but he's only 22 years old and so far those stats do look pretty damn promising. And for the left-back I'm going for Sergio Gomez. He's only 23 years old and 76 overall. Now I know these two may seem unrealistic right now but let me just explain my reasons why I'm getting each player. As you can see Man City's best left-back is Nuno Mendes. Their second best left-back is Hartman and Sergio 
Sergio Gomez is their third best left back. So at least with Norwich City's absolutely guaranteed game time and there'll basically be no competition. As for Patterson, Everton got relegated last season and I think if Patterson got the opportunity to go from the Championship to the Premier League, he'd absolutely take it. So given the current circumstances, these players joining Norwich City isn't that unrealistic at all when you think about it. Now Nathan Patterson's market value was 7.5 million. I reckon we can get a really good deal here. I'm going to go for 7 mil on the dot, half a million below his market value. They want 11.2 million. They're going to try and get as much money out of us as humanly possible because they've been relegated. Okay, let's go for 8 million instead. They still want 11.2 million. Okay, that tension meter is rising. Let's go for 9 million. Let's hope to God they actually compromise and meet us halfway. Okay, they want some time to think about it. No doubt in my mind they're going to come back to us and agree to this. What did I just tell you, boys? Everton have agreed the 9 million sum. I just need to sort the player negotiations out and then he'll become a Norwich City player. I'm going to offer him a lot of money, 50k a week. This is purely because he's going to be on a five-year deal and we probably won't renew his contract for a while. But there you go, we've got a centre-back and now we've got our right-back. And there he is, boys, donning that number 32 shirt. He's greeted by the media. I just hope we've got enough money left over to bring in Sergio Gomez. Okay, I might have messed up. We've got 10 million left in our budget. I don't think that's going to be enough to bring in Sergio Gomez. He's worth between 16 and 12.8 million. There is a chance we could pull this off, but we've got to be as good at negotiating the deal as bloody Jordan Balfort. Now I'm offering Man City 8 million and Sam McCallum. The reason being, he's only 22 years old. He's still a lot of time to progress as a player for him. They want 13.1 mil and 15% salon clause. That is not a good sign. Now what if we gave them 9 million and Christos Solos? Now I know I bigged him up massively in season one, but I think we've got our left winger position covered for now. They only want half a million more. Okay, that's absolutely fine by me. We are one step closer to signing Gomez. The problem is, I don't think we can afford his wages. 23k is the most we can give him a week. Yeah, I don't think this is going to happen, boys. He's too expensive for us. I think if we're going to bring him into the team, we're going to have to sell some players. So it looks like Shane Duffy, Adam Forshaw, and Kenny McLean's time at Norwich City is up. To be fair, they're all in the 30s anyways, and then we're going to be bench warm, so we're not exactly going to miss them all that much. And with the sales of those three players, we've now got... 18 million in our budget and surely to god that is enough to bring in Sergio Gomez and this time boys we could outright afford him 13 million he cost us but we had no issues sorting his wages out this time which makes him a Norwich City player and that means we've got our centre back right back left back situation sorted out and we've done everything we can to keep Norwich City in the prem and that leaves the team looking like this going into season 2 and now that we've actually got a half decent defence on our hands I reckon we definitely stand a better chance to survive in the Prem. But like I've just said boys, I've done all I can. We've literally spent every penny we've got. It's now up to these boys to do the job on the pitch and keep us in the Premier League until Season 3. While Season 2 is done and dusted and we've done more than just survive, we finished mid-table with Norwich City for a newly promoted team in the toughest league in the world. That is absolutely phenomenal. I honestly couldn't have asked for anything better and we actually weren't far off getting into the top 10. However, we got knocked out in Round 3 of the FA Cup by bloody South Hampton. And we made it to round three of the Carabao Cup, this time getting knocked out by Burnley. So, you know what? I'll take the Premier League finish, but in Cups, it's the same old story. But just look at this team, man. The improvement this year has genuinely been phenomenal. No wonder we've done so well. Especially with three signings, Patterson, Kosunu, and Gomez, they've all gone up massively this season. And stats-wise, our front three truly did do a good job, but Sergio Gomez from the left-back position got seven goals and four assists in 35 games. He's a full-back, man. That's fantastic. Fantastic. I know we haven't done well in the FA Cup or the Carabao Cup, but we finished 12th in the Premier League, man. For a newly promoted team, like I've already said, that is absolutely incredible. But this is only our second season in charge of this Norwich City team. We've got a long way to go before we get them to the Champions League. Our journey with this team has only just begun. So we are now into Season 3 with Norwich City, and we've got £41 million in our budget. It's less than what we had in Season 2, but it is what it is. And looking at this team, our front three looks pretty decent our midfield trio looks pretty decent our defense looks good everywhere actually looks pretty solid but if we were to go from a bottom half finish to a top half finish we are definitely gonna have to make some improvements somewhere and i think it might be time to get a stronger keeper than angus gunn he's almost 30 years old and he's only 77 overall and on top of that he's actually one of the weaker links in the team and i think nunez's time is also up in the starting 11 he's only 76 overall and he is actually the weakest link in the starting 11 i'm not saying that replacing these players will do us wonders this season. What I am saying though, it'll give us a better chance of finishing inside the 
top 10. And whilst 40 million is still a pretty decent amount of money to work with, it's still not the best amount of money to work with. We're still going to have to be quite tactical. Now, I found centre midfielder Andy Juthi. He's only 22 years old. He's 6 foot 2 and he's 79 overall. This guy looks like an absolute monster. He's got some very promising stats, and with how young he is, we could turn this guy into a beast. And for only 25 million on the dot, we have made him a Norwich City player. And that leaves us with only 13 million left to bring in a goalkeeper. And honestly, I think we're going to have to take a leaf out of Nottingham Forest's playbook when it comes to this. Meaning I'm going for Keon Castiles from Wolfsburg. He's 33, 84 rated. He's still got some absolutely incredible stats. And in real life, Wolfsburg finished just where we did in the Prem. So I reckon he'd actually join us. But he's worth between 15 and 12 million. So this may be a little bit tricky to actually bring him to the squad. So I'm going to offer them Christos Solos and 8 million on the dot. I'm pretty certain this will seal the deal. Okay, maybe not. They want 15.9 million. Oh my God. Okay, we're going to have to counter with something big. Okay, this time I'm giving them 8.5 million alongside Nunes. I'm not too bothered about giving them a bit more money. After all, this guy will definitely be worth it. They still are set on 15.9 million. We're going to have to go for someone else, boys. We just aren't able to afford Keon Castiles. That is a massive shame though, man. I feel like he would have made a massive difference, but we're going to have to find someone else. Now, we could go for Mark Fleck and he's 32 years old. Granted, he's three ratings lower than Keon Castiles, but he's worth between 13 and 11 million. This guy is definitely more affordable than Castiles. So I'm going to offer them Christos Solis once again in 7 million. There's a better chance these guys will accept it than Morseburg worth for Castiles. Nope, they're set on bloody money as well. Jesus, why does everybody want money and not a player swap deal? Okay, instead of 11 million, let's go for 9.75. Like, that's just under 10 mil. They are set on 11.2. Okay, the tension meter's not going anywhere. Let's go for 10 mil. Let's meet in the middle. Thank God for that. They've accepted the transfer offer. We just need to make sure that the player negotiations go well now. Now, we've run into a pickle. We can only offer 50k a week, but that is higher than his current wage. He might go for this. Thank God he's actually accepted that. We've basically bankrupted ourselves in this transfer window, but we've got our goalkeeper and we've got our midfielder. And there he is, boys, in our goalkeeper's jersey. We've done all we can to improve the team this year. And now the squad looks like this and it into season three. And if I do say so myself, I think we've done a phenomenal job so far with this Norwich City squad. But I am keeping an eye on Christian Fashion. At his 31 years old now, he's fast approaching 32. That overall will definitely start declining pretty soon. But until that happens, boys, he is indeed staying in this team. Now, last year, we finished mid-table with a Norwich City team a lot weaker than the one we've got right now. So, theoretically speaking, we should creep into that top 10. Well, that hasn't happened, boys. We're 13th at the end of Season 3, and we finished lower than we did last year with a better team. Honestly, I wish someone could explain to me how this actually works. But we did just as poorly in the FA Cup, only making it to Round 3. And the exact same thing happened in the Carabao Cup. Honestly, I think pigs will sooner fly than us making it to the final of one of these competitions. Well, this is confusing, man. Majority of our team now are 80 rated or above, and we actually did worse than we did last year, man. How does that make sense? And when you look at the stats, boys, you gotta admit, this season hasn't been that good at all for us. I thought bringing in a better centre midfielder and better goalkeeper would have definitely got us inside the top 10, but it looks like I was absolutely wrong. We've gone backwards this season, boys. We've got to go back to the drawing board for season four and figure out where we've gone wrong, because we definitely need a top 10 finish next year. So it's now our fourth year in charge of Norwich City and we've got just over 60 million in the budget man. That is absolutely fantastic. Now looking at this team you could argue that it has the potential to do well in the Europa Conference League and the Europa League so something has gone wrong somewhere. Now you guys know I always love to put the blame on the defence or goalkeeper because if you've got a strong defence and goalkeeper you're laughing. But after last year's performance and seeing the stats overall I've got to put the blame on our front three man. I don't think they are up to the task anymore. And especially with Christian Fastnatch being 32 years old now, I think it is time that we offload some plays, get as much money as possible, and we bring in an entirely new front three. So I'll put Christian Fastnatch and a couple of players on the transfer list, and by the end of the sales of these players, hopefully we've got a lot of money to spend on our front three. And after officially selling a couple of those players, we've now got just under 100 million in our budget, and that is more than enough to improve our front three. And starting with the right winger, I'm going for Johan Bakayoko, who currently plays for Arsenal. He's only 23, 83 overall. No stats for a winger are absolutely fantastic. And the best part about Bakayoko, his contract is running out, meaning we'll get him cheap as chips. And guys, trust me, I wasn't joking. We've just got him for 36 million on the dot. That is nine and a half million below 
low is market value. So we've now got our right winger sorted. Now we just need a striker and a left winger. Now for the striker, I'm going for Maximilian Bayer, 82 overall already. It's six foot one and he's got 94 sprint, 92 acceleration. And because his contract was running out, we only had to spend 28 million on him. Something tells me that Maximilian Bayer is going to absolutely run right in the Prem this year, but we're not done yet. We've still got just under 30 million in our budget to bring in a better left winger than the one we've already got. The question is, who are we actually going to bring in? Now, I've narrowed it down to three players. The first one being OGC Nisi Sofian Diop. He's only 26 years old and already 82 overall, but the fact that he's quite slow puts me off him a bit. There's also Callum Hudson Adoy. He's a decent age, decent rating, and we all know that this guy turns into a beast, but again, he's not the quickest player in the world. And that leads me to Hyun Min Sun's pre gen Min J Choi, who's absolutely rapid, only 21 years old and 80 rated. And guys, out of the three of these, I think you can guess who I'm going for. We spent 22.8 million to make him a Norwich City player, and that's officially our transfer window done. And now the team looks like they're setting into season four, and with our front three not only being absolutely incredible, but all under the age of 25, I am expecting massive growth from each and every single one of them. I'll tell you what else I'm expecting too, European football for next year, man. This team is definitely capable of getting a top six finish, man. It's just up to these boys to actually play football on the pitch. What did I tell you, boys? Fifth in the league at the end of season four. Not only have we got a top six finish, we have qualified for European football at long bloody last. I told you guys at the start of this season, the team we've got is good enough to compete in Europe, and I'm going to make sure that they prove me right. And what's actually mental is West Ham United won the Prem with only 81 points, man. You'd actually be lucky to get third or second place with that. And you ain't going to believe this. We made the semis of the FA Cup to get knocked out by Rotherham United. How does that even happen? And we got knocked out by Barnsley in round three of the Carabao Cup. I actually give up with the FA Cup and Carabao Cup, man. We're just never going to win them. But look at the team, man. Not only is everybody massively improved this season, everybody's happy. Everything is looking up at Norwich City. And whilst the stats for the most part don't look too dissimilar from last year, Baka Yoko has been the player of the year. Got up to 87 overall, getting 36 goal contributions in 44 games. Season four has been a massive W. We finished inside the top six, meaning we've got European football to contend for next year. And with the team looking like this and the improvements that we're inevitably going to make to it, I actually think in our first attempt in a European competition, we're going to bloody win the entire damn thing. So it's now our fifth year in charge of Norwich City. We've got just under 150 million in our budget. Finishing inside the top six does definitely have its perks. And I think if we spend that money well on this team and make the necessary improvements, there's no reason why we can't get a top four finish in the Prem and go on to win the Europa League. Now, I think we need a better centre back than Sam Bukema. It absolutely pains me to say this, but he is the weakest link in the starting 11. He's been absolutely incredible for us since we brought him in in either season one or season two, but now it's time to bring in somebody better to play in Europe. And I think Sheaf's time in the starting 11 is also up. He's been phenomenal for us in that midfield role, but now that we're in Europe, we definitely need somebody better. But I can't see me spending all this money on two players, so if we've got any money left over, we'll revisit the team and see where we can further improve it. Now, I've just found Ladislav Kretzi. He's 6 foot 3, 84 overall. He's got absolutely incredible strength, and he's not exactly slow either. I think him and Kasuna will be a nightmare to get past. Now, it's worth between 37 and 47 million, so I'm going to offer him 37 million on the dot just to see what they say. They want 46.7 million. Okay, let's drop that down to 41 and a half million. They want 46.7. They're not going to budge, are they? Okay, let's go 43 and a half million. Let's meet in the middle. There we go. Compromise negotiations. One step closer to gain our centre back. Now, I offered him 70 grand, but he wants 630k signing bonus and a clean sheet bonus. That is not happening. We're going to remove that bonus. We're going to drop this down to 500k. Mate, I'm offering you almost double what you're on at Villarreal. Just accept it and stop being greedy. You want a bit more money. Oh my god. Okay, let's drop this down to 550k and call it today, shall we? Nope, you want 620. You know what? I can't be bothered. We're just signing you. You absolute greedy sod. You better be bloody worth it. And there he is, our brand new centre-back. Now we just need a better defensive midfielder. And I think Peplu is 
is absolutely the right man for it. He's 28 years old, 84 overall. And when you actually look at his defensive stats, they are absolutely off the charts, man. I can't think of anybody bloody better than this guy. And guys, for 40 million pounds on the dot, Pepelu is now a Norwich City player. And the best thing is, I'm pretty certain we've got quite a bit of money left over in our budget. We've still got 54 million left. I think we can definitely still further improve this squad. But with the signing of Pepelu in midfield and Kretzi as our centre, back it is now so obvious what the weakest link in our starting 11 is it is of course gabriel Sarri's 28 82 overall don't get me wrong he's a very goddamn good player but i don't think he's good enough to win us the europa league this year i think we need somebody better and let's be honest with 54 million left in the budget i think i'd be an absolute moron not to utilize the fact i've got money and spend it on somebody better and i found christian aslani from leicester city he's only 25 years old and already 84 overall and these stats do look pretty well well-rounded. I think he is the perfect replacement for Gabriel Sarri. And that is our transfer window done as we've just spent 48 and a half million to bring him to Norwich City. And that leaves the team now looking like this. And boys, never mind the bloody Europa League. This team right now should be in the Champions League. The only real positive about not being in the Champions League yet is we can keep developing and improving this team to the point that when we are in the Champions League, eventually we'll absolutely tear us apart. But for now, we're in Group E of the Europa League alongside Braga, SK, Rapid and Molder FK. And let's be real, boys. Not only should we be absolutely decimating this group stage, we've got to make at least the final. We've surely got to be one of the favourites to win this competition. Well, Season 5 is done and dusted and you ain't going to believe this. We've won the Premier League by one points in the end. Only 78 points though, man. That's ridiculous. Manchester City legitimately lost nine games this season, man. That's basically unheard of nowadays. But that means we finally won our first trophy with Norwich City and we finally qualified for the Champions League. That's exactly where we belong. And we could have got the double, man. We lost to Man City in the FA Cup final. Oh, that's such a missed opportunity. But so far, we've won the Prem, made the final of the FA Cup and the quarters of the Carabao Cup. Let's see what we've done in the Europa League. Well, as predicted, we absolutely annihilated Group E. We finished four points clear at the top of the table and we cruised to the knockouts. And we meet Ajax in the round of 16 in a 10-goal thriller where we come out on top. Oh my God, imagine watching that in real life. But we smoke RC Celta 3-1 in the quarterfinals. That's a little bit better. But AC Milan, United and Roman meet us in the semi. It's going to be interesting to see not only who we get put up against, but if we make it to the final. And we have made it to the final. We've batted United 4-2 on aggregate and we're playing Roma in the Europa League final. Oh my god, surely we've got to have won this now. And we have boys, we've beaten Roma 2-0 in the final. That's the double secured. Not only have we won the Prem, we won the bloody Europa League. And I would say just look at the start in 11, but it looks like for some reason a lot of players are on international duty, but that alone just speaks volumes to how good this team actually is now. And the stats this season are amazing. 29-6 for Bakayoko, 21-4 for Boris. Hang on, why is he playing over young Min Sun's pre-gen. And also, why is an 82 rated Josh Sargent gain more goals than our 87 rated starting 11 striker? Honestly, this Norwich City team doesn't make sense sometimes. But the more important thing is, we've won the Premier League, we've won the Europa League, and we've got Champions League football for season 6. And the best thing is, we've got a full transfer window to improve this starting 11 next year. And I think once we've completed that transfer window, that Champions League is ours to lose. So it's now our 6th year in charge of Norwich, and we've got over 200 million to spend in our budget. We are going to have so much fun in this transfer window. Now, when you look at this team, you'd probably think to yourselves, you don't really need to improve it. Your lowest rated players are 85. It's absolutely sound. But guys, trust me when I say there's a couple of areas to this team that we do need to focus on. We need a new keeper in place of Mark Fleck. And granted, he's 85 overall, but he's in his mid-30s now. And that's not the only reason I want to get a new keeper. Due to his age, as you can see, all he's going to do is go down and overall. He'll make a fantastic second choice keeper but when we're going into the Champions League I want a keeper on the top of his game and whilst our sub bench is surprisingly stacked with quite a bit of quality it wouldn't hurt us to improve it just a little bit more especially bringing in a left back from McCallum and remember we've got over 200 million to spend to improve this Norwich City team so if we don't win any trophies this season we can't blame anyone but ourselves I'm starting with the keeper I'm going for Mike Magnan now granted he's in his 30s but he's 90 overall that's 5 ratings higher than Mark Flecken and for only 32.5 million
Sterling is now our first choice goalkeeper. And now look at that starting 11, man. With a 90 rated goalkeeper in between the sticks, I feel like we're going to be unstoppable this year. But we still got over 180 million to spend on this team, man. We can't just make one transfer. We've got to improve that sub bench, haven't we? Now, I'm not going to bother bringing in a second choice keeper. We've already got one in Mark Flecken. However, a fullback is definitely in need. Another centre back, maybe for Bukema, and a winger for Saints. But apart from that, I'm happy to leave the rest of the subs bench as it is. But I'm not going to lie, if we end up spending all of this money on these three subs bench players, I will be absolutely amazed. So starting with the fullback, I went from Valentin Barco from Nottingham Forest, and he cost us 44.6 million. As for the backup winger, I went for the bottle jobs Brian Gill, and he only cost us 40.9 million. And finally, for the backup centre back, I went for Bayern Munich's Wesley Fofon, who cost us 41 million, and that's our transfer window done. And now the team looks like this heading into season six, and as mental as this is about to sound, I think we've got the tools at our disposal to win the quadruple this year. And we could win our first trophy right now as we're in the Community Shield final against Manchester City, and for their standard, I actually like our chances against these guys. We're at Wembley Stadium, the team's looking good, 5 p.m. kickoff, and we win our first trophy of the season, Kretzi and Bayer with the goals, that's our first trophy won, maybe I'm not exactly mental for saying we could win the quadruple, and we could actually win the double before the season even begins, we're against Napoli in the Super Cup final, the last year's Champions League winners, now if we beat these guys, we know that we're on to a good start, we've already won one trophy, can we win the second, and that's exactly what we've done, we have just beaten last year's Champions League winners, that is absolutely massive, two trophies won already this season, man. I'm telling you now, we're in for an incredible year with Norwich City. Now, as for the Champions League, we're in Group D alongside AC Milan, PSV, and Jew Gardens IF. I'm pretty sure I butchered that last name, but let me know in the comments. I'm sure you will anyway. But considering the fact we've just beaten Napoli last season's Champions League winners, we have got such a good shot of winning this season in our first try of doing so. But I've done all I can this transfer window to prepare this team for Season 6, and considering the fact we've already won the double, I'd say I've done a pretty decent decent job. But it's now up to these boys this season to perform well on the pitch both in the Premier League and in Europe. We're in the Premier League boys, we finished second at the end of season 6, 10 points behind Arsenal who let's be honest boys absolutely deserve to win the Prem this year. But the wacky part is City finished 5th, Liverpool finished 7th, the ball jobs finished 8th and United actually finished 10th man. This career mode save is absolutely wacky. And in the FA Cup we made it to the quarters only to get knocked out by Manchester City man. They are genuinely the bane of my existence. At this point, I think every single player in your team could be 99 rated and you'd still only make it to round four of the Carabao Cup at best. But heading over to the Champions League, ourselves and Milan did get through the group stage and we both go to the round of 16. And that's where we meet Villarreal and absolutely batter them 4-1 on aggregate. And we just got past Liverpool 3-2 in the quarterfinals and Manchester City, PSG and OGC Nisa in the semi-finals. I can't lie, I wouldn't mind meeting up against OGC Nisa in the semis. But we get our revenge on Manchester City 4-3 on aggregate intensity. So we are meeting PSG in the Champions League final. I've got a feeling we're going to wipe the floor with PSG, guys. Our defence are going to cook Mbappe. And Johan Bakayoko, oh my god, 53 goal contributions in 57 games. The guy's only 26, for God's sake. He is absolutely incredible. And this is the starting 11 going into the final. And for once, guys, we've got no injuries, no suspensions. A couple of people aren't very happy for some reason, but you know what? I don't care. In comparison to what we started with with Norwich City, we have turned them into an absolute monstrosity of a side. It's only taken us six seasons to do it. And whilst we are unfortunately not on for the quadruple anymore, the treble is still on to be won, man. We won the FA Community Shield and the UEFA Super Cup this year. All we need to do is win the Champions League and we've got it. But to get the treble, we've got to get past the most dominant team in recent memory in French football, PSG. Pepe Lewis found Patterson. That's a beautiful ball. Patterson and can we spot back a Yoko? No way was he offside. What are you on about? See, Joe Gomez is on the ball. I'm looking for options. Okay, I found Juve. Juve. Pepelu, Pepelu, go to the right-hand side. That's beautiful. This is lovely. This is lovely. Bakayoko's on the ball. He's caught inside. By it. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, shot. Goal. Come on, please. What's just happened there? What's this? What's just happened? 
Why is Kylian Mbappe a player to watch? What the hell was that for? Was it a handball or something? Referee, you've screwed me there. We should be 1-0 up. Oh. Instead, PSG are coming forward now. Oh, I don't like this. Great. Nope. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, great defending. Juve is on the ball now. We're pushing forward. We are looking for that first goal. Looks like we may get it with Choi. Can we get it with Choi? No, Donnarumma with the fantastic save. Okay, Pep Lewis on the corner. First corner of the game. That's a great delivery as well. It's still alive. Kasunu, head it down. Back Yoko, back post. That's a beautiful ball. If anyone can get there, no, we can't. Patterson's now on the ball. I'm seeing that run. Aslani inside. Baye. Oh, that's beautiful. Baye on his right foot. Can oh, no. Ref. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying ref for. Come on. We that's got to go in. We are absolutely killing PSG. I told you, Buzz, we'd be wiping the floor with them. Can this be goal number one? Yes, it is. No offside. No free kick to the opposition. 35 minutes in. Maximilian Baye puts us 1-0 up against the French Giants. But PSG are coming forward with Ousmane Dembele. He's pushing Sergio Gomez. He's turned him. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't get over the fact we go 1-0 up in the 35th minute and just before it hits the 40 minute mark, we concede. I mean, what the hell? Okay, we've got Choi on the ball now. We're going to find Sergio Gomez. He's not the fastest player in the world, but he's very technical. He's cutting inside here. Oh, okay. Oh, that actually worked out really well. We give it back to Sergio. Sergio, oh no. Okay, we still got it somehow. We still got it. We need to play this around. Okay, this is decent. We keep the ball. Okay, we still got it. We still got it. Maximilian Bayer. Can he make it 2-1? Yes, he can. We kept the ball alive. Thanks to Sergio Gomez's technical ability. We pass it round. We find Maximilian Bayer. He does a beautiful turn to get rid of his defender. He smashes it top left corner. Bang, get in. Maximilian Bayer, man. What a player he's been for us since we signed him. PSG are right back on the attack. Frankie de Jong's on the ball now. We can't let him pass it. Oh, no. Oh, that's lucky. That is very lucky. If that was Mbappe, that's too all. Okay, this is decent. Okay. Oh, what a turn. Can we find Bayer? Yes, we can. Bayer, once again with the return. Can we shoot? No. Okay, Bayer still got it. We still got it. We still got it. Choi, on his left foot. Can we get the third? No, but it does go for a corner. Extra time is still running. We still got the ball. Bakayoko is still on it. Oh, there we go. Bayer, for his third goal. My days, done a roomy. You have no right to be saving that. But I think that is it anyway. The full-time whistle has gone. Norwich City have beaten PSG 2-1 in the Champions League final. We have made them the best team in the world. And that too caused a long time, boys. Six seasons in total. But the end result was we created a monstrosity with Norwich City and we won them the Champions League. But now that this video is finished, you should click right here to watch another one. I bet you'll enjoy it.